Welcome to the Let's Eat Grandma the Let's Career Eat Grandma Warrior Podcast. All right, welcome to the 29th episode of the Let's Eat Grandma Career Warrior Podcast, where our goal is not only to help you land your dream job, but to be the best professional you can be. Today, we're going to address the question, how can I actually integrate keywords in my resume? All right, I have a funny story. So I was actually giving a presentation about keywords in ATS software, very similar to this podcast. And uh, we were talking about how to get keywords integrated within the resume. And I had somebody raise their hand kind of in the middle of the presentation. So I kind of stopped it and I was interested to see what he had to say. And he said, "Um, you know, I actually had a good friend of mine who um, he ended up kind of taking a bunch of keywords that he thought were relevant for the job posting. He took the keywords he thought were relevant, made the font size one or two points, and then made the font color white, pretty much making the keywords invisible on the resume. And I was like, what? Guys, I do not recommend that, and that's not where this episode's gonna go. Um, In fact, it's probably gonna work against you, and we'll talk about that kind of towards the end of the episode. But we are going to talk about more tactful ways to actually integrate those within the resume and ways that are really going to help you out to start getting more hits and more matches. This is a fantastic follow-up from the previous episode, number 24, in which we addressed what keywords are and how to find them. If you haven't listened to that yet, I would recommend pausing and going back to that. Before I launch into this episode, I wanted to give a shout out to my French listeners, my people over at Podmust. Podmust is a great directory, guys. They are new and upcoming, and they have a great selection of podcasts. Um, Gosh, there really are a lot of you French people listening to this podcast, and I'm honored. And uh, the irony is, when I go over to France, you guys don't like listen to me talk in English. But ironically, you guys are listening to me talk to English for hours. So, ha. All right. Hopefully, don't get offended. So, I just wanted to give you guys an offer. Send me an email to projects at letseatgrandma.com. So P-R-O-J-E-C-T-S at let's eat grandma.com and let us know you came from Podmust. I will personally write you back and let you know what I think of your resume or CV. All right, let's get to it. Let's educate you and make your job search a little bit better with our 28th episode of the Career Warrior Podcast. Okay, so all right, we're going to talk about the different sections of a resume on where to include keywords. And I'm not going to include every different section within the resume because I think there were some really simple ones um, that don't need to be mentioned. But really, I'm going to go over kind of the most overlooked sections within a resume to include keywords. And those are summary of qualifications, accomplishments, contact information, and your file name. So let's go ahead and launch into that and talk about that summary of qualifications, which I think, to be honest, the summary is the hardest part of the resume to do. That's because so many people do it poorly. They kind of write these generalized copy and paste kind of summaries of um, who they are as a professional. But, you know, I do agree it's a good chance to integrate keywords. However, you want to kind of make sure you do it tactfully. And we'll talk about how to do that right now. So in the 24th episode, we brought up a sample job posting of a firm partner at an intellectual property law firm. The description of the posting was prominent international law firm seeks a two to seven year associate with an antitrust practice for the Washington, D.C. office. Experience with an antitrust discipline can be in any business or healthcare area. So based on our knowledge from our 24th episode, we extracted some sample keywords that might be used to filter out candidates. Those sample keywords were attorney, JD, antitrust, partner, and Washington, DC. Of course, location is a great keyword opportunity. So for the summary of qualifications, I highly recommend including a leading sentence that showcases what type of professional you are. Within that leading sentence is a magnificent opportunity to integrate keywords. So for this person who was an attorney, I crafted this particular sentence. Seasoned attorney with 10 plus years experience serving Washington DC clients in the antitrust discipline. So immediately within that first sentence, we included the keywords attorney, Washington DC, and antitrust. Boom. 
So that is just scratching the surface of what you can do with a summary of qualifications. And that's why, especially for career changers or people who don't necessarily have the experience, why I think having a summary is a great opportunity to get targeted and integrate keywords. All right, let's talk about number two, which is accomplishments or work experiences. So this is the kind of the meat of your resume, that section that says professional experiences, the one where you probably should be spending the most time on. So I'll give a quick example of how to integrate a keyword. Say you are a software engineer, you work in Austin, Texas, and you work 80 hours a week and you're super busy. All right, that's enough. Um, And essentially you create a bullet point saying that you developed over 10 different software programs that reduce user time by at least 25%. Great, it's a good bullet point, I like it a lot. And the reason why I like that is because it gives specifics and it also includes numbers. Chris is all about that and he likes for his clients to get specific. But the opportunity here is the fact that he doesn't have any specific keywords towards product development in his entire resume. Oh no, what do we do? Well, this bullet point is a golden opportunity to include that specific keyword because we're talking about product development. So in this case, what I would do is take this bullet point and convert it to include the keyword at the very beginning of the bullet point. So the new bullet point would read product development, colon, developed over 10 different software programs that reduce user time by at least 25%. All right, so for you visual learners, you're probably getting frustrated right now saying, I can't, I don't see it, I don't see it. So no worries to check out the vlog. Um, it's gonna give you a lot more, it's gonna give you a lot more to work with and it'll be easier to visualize how this looks. All right, number three, file name. Gosh, this is probably the most overlooked way to integrate keywords. And based on the way that ATS systems work, this is actually possibly one of the best ways to include it, especially if you don't have the experience. But let's take that product development thing and take it to the next level. Let's say you know you want to apply for product development manager positions. About 9 out of 10 people, when they're naming their file, are just going to name it uh, the John Smith underscore resume. Don't do that. It's, It's just so plain and so simple and everyone else does it. Instead, give yourself the opportunity to be more targeted within your resume. And so what you're going to do is write your name. So you can put in your last name. I think that's fine. So Smith underscore product underscore development underscore manager dot PDF or dot docx, whatever you're using to submit it as a file name. So I recommend, yes, integrating the core position title or the core keyword within the file name because not only is it a chance to get picked up by ATS software, but it's also an opportunity to show recruiters that you are getting targeted and you are putting your best foot forward to showcase the best materials you have to bring to the table. Quick note on keyword software. ATS software is great. It scans resumes for keywords. However, most people just put all the emphasis on the resume, so they'll make sure that their resume is completely loaded up with these keywords or whatever. That's fine if they do it tactically, uh, tactfully. However, so when you're actually filling out those answers, that's another opportunity, and I especially recommend filling out those application field answers as thoroughly as possible to make sure you are integrating keywords. Also, let's not forget that ATS software is getting more and more advanced. And so a lot of the times, guys, you can actually pull into that candidate's LinkedIn profile and the ATS software, like Talia Bullhorn, whatever it is, will actually scan your LinkedIn profile to find the appropriate keywords to see if you're a good match. So try to look at the big picture, guys. Don't just try to integrate keywords within your resume, but just make sure that it is just a part of the big picture, like I said. So number four, in terms of how to integrate keywords within your resume, look at that contact information, like I said. So if you can recall from our 24th episode, location was a big one. So you're going to want to make sure that you have the city name, ideally, of the place you're applying for at the top of the resume. 
this is a little bit of complicated. I understand that because I know a lot of you are applying for positions out there that are outside of your current location or your city. So this is where some resume writers would advocate for you to find a really close friend or family member who has that address and to put that at the top of the resume. This can also backfire when somebody who is hiring calls you in for an interview tomorrow and to be in person. So don't always advocate for that. And sometimes I recommend to find other ways to include that location. But just remember that at the top of the resume, that is an opportunity. And also, like I mentioned earlier, including your LinkedIn URL can be very beneficial because a lot of the times these softwares can pull into those hyperlinks and scan the appropriate keywords. This is a social media review feature, and this is what some of those bigger, badder ATS systems have. So alas, those are the four most overlooked sections in your resume to include various keywords within the resume. So once again, that's a summary of qualifications at the top your professional experiences, which oftentimes include accomplishments, your file name, and last but not least, your contact information. So I do have some additional tidbits of information, potentially even more useful than these past four sections of the resume to in integrate keywords, but this could definitely help out a lot of people here. And the first tip I want to outline is always be forward looking. So that being said, look to match with the position you're trying to fill, not necessarily past experiences. So I think a lot of people get caught up in trying to include the right thing in the resume when they don't necessarily have the position. And I will admit, yes, it is more difficult to land positions that you haven't necessarily had before in the past. So for instance, if you are a software developer, but your calling or kind of the next progression in your career is to be an IT manager, then you're going to have sometimes a hard time integrating the right buzzwords that showcase that you are a qualified person for the position. So in that case, you're going to want to get a little bit creative in terms of showcasing that you're the right person for the role. So a lot of the times these applicant tracking systems looking for IT managers are going to be scanning for managerial buzzwords or leadership type buzzwords. For instance, if I'm looking for an IT manager in Austin, I might type in my applicant tracking system, IT manager, Austin, and it will scan for specific resumes that have those keywords. So this is when you have to be a little bit more targeted and like I said, a little bit more creative. So this is where the craft of professional resume writing comes in. So I always recommend getting kind of a second point of view and another reason to contact a professional about doing that. But point being, try to make sure you're as forward looking as possible. The two types of people who I think can probably get the most benefit from this advice, students and career transitioners. Because students and career transitioners, both are people who do not have necessarily the experience of the role they're trying to fill. You know, a lot of the times they're applying for possibly entry level positions or positions that they haven't necessarily held in the past. And they need to make sure that their resume is a good fit. So always be forward looking. And that's where you need to integrate things like transferable skills. And I think a summary statement can go a long way in showcasing that you're qualified. All right. And last thing, there is such a thing as taking this keywords game too far. And now with your newfound power, there comes some responsibility to not abuse that power. So guys, I'm not advocating for you to exaggerate your past performances. In fact, I don't really want you to stretch your resume too, too much because this is only going to hurt you in the very end. I'm not advocating for you to keyword stuff or to absolutely just make your resume good for the robots. In fact, what I recommend you do is look through your resume and do two different proofreadings. So review it in two different ways. The first pass you're going to do with your resume is from the perspective of an applicant tracking system or a robot. So you're going throughout your resume and you're seeing how many keywords have I included and are the keywords making me a good match for the job posting I'm trying to fill. So that's one pass. And believe me, if you just did the pass this way and didn't look at it any other way, your resume would not be good. In fact, it probably would come out to be pretty plain and a little bit, and eh, let's just say generic. The second pass you want to do with your resume is put yourself in the perspective of a hiring decision maker or a recruiter trying to find the best fit for their company. 
this is really key guys because at the end of the day somebody who is a part of the company is going to make the decision to bring you on a robot is not going to make the decision not now it's 2019 maybe in the year 2030 2040 hiring will be actually outsourced to robots but for now real human beings are looking at your resume and they're looking at the interview they're looking at a bunch of things and they're making the decision to bring you on board as as a part of the company so really you need to make sure that your professional experiences are impressive you know do you include those numbers do you include those results that showed that you added value for the company you saved the company money you saved the company time point being don't just write the resume for the robots write for human beings as well all right some words of encouragement the job search depending on the industry or the position can really take 20 weeks sometimes more Keep in mind the numbers game aspect that really on average, if you're applying to just applicant tracking systems, that just 2% of resumes get interviews. So persistence is key when you're playing this game. Just keep trying, keep updating your resume. It's not you, it's the robots. Don't get bogged down on the fact that you're getting these stupid automated responses saying that you're not the right person for the company. It's not necessarily the case, guys. It's just a part of the hiring landscape now. And that's just because sometimes with some postings and job applications, companies will receive a flood of hundreds and hundreds of different resumes, and they just need some way to filter out these candidates. And so keeping that in mind, it's not perfect. Sometimes you will need to, I don't know, apply for the same position twice and possibly redevelop the resume. I don't know. Am I suggesting that? Possibly. The point being is persistence is key. You got to keep trying. And you got to find other ways to apply for the position. Sometimes you really got to play that networking game. And we have, as you know, tons of episodes for that. All right, guys, this wraps up the 29th episode of the Career Warrior podcast. We got a little technical there. We talked about, um, we talked about specifics and how to integrate keywords within your resume. It was hopefully not too boring and dry for you. Hopefully I made it a little bit more fun. Once again, a reminder to take a look at our blog because I think for a lot of you, it's gonna make a lot more sense to visually see the, some of the things I'm talking about. So the summary, the professional experiences, contact info, etc. So I'm gonna drop that link in the description below and you can check that out. All right, guys, I really enjoyed this episode thoroughly. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk soon. And for more on your job search, make sure to check out letseatgrandma.com. That's where you can find our blog, where we post the podcast show notes and so many more articles that will help you in your job search. You can also check out our resume services if you are interested in getting your resume professionally reworked. And please make sure to show us some love by jumping onto iTunes and leaving us a rating. The support from my fellow warriors will show the world how great this podcast is and help other people in their job search pay it forward. Thanks guys for being true warriors and thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week.